you know, when the first album went out, I was on it. When the second album went out, I was on it. Third, fourth, fifth. You know, so I was there when it was founded. Mm -hmm. Andy founded it and put a lineup together of which I was part. So by the strict definition of it, I'm part of the founding members of the Tangent. But it, Andy and the Tangent will always be synonymous. It's his project and his baby, you know. No. Um, okay. Kettle of fish to um, or some of the other things that I've been, been doing. Okay. But, yeah, I consider myself to be a founding member because I was there at the beginning and stayed, you know, for quite a few albums before I decided to go. So. Yeah. Well, personally, I'd rather not. Um, I like it that I was in the tangent, and I was very happy to be there. Right. It wasn't my first priority. Right. It was in the same way that really UPF at the moment isn't my primary responsibility. My responsibility has always been my own albums, and they were around well before the tangent, and there's been more of them. You know, um, that's really where I, you know, if I was to be remembered, I'd rather be remembered for my own albums than being a member of the tangent at some point. Good though that uh, you know those memories were, and good though the tangent albums are, uh, still remain to be. I mean, I, as I say, it's it's a funny thing where people, you always get labelled with the band that's the most famous thing you've been in. True. You know? Well, the Manning Band uh, gracefully came to a close over Christmas, two thousand thirteen. Okay. Um, I really got to the point with the, that lineup where I thought we'd gone as far as we could. I was getting quite tired, um, and I just wanted to change. To be honest, uh, okay. I wanted to do something. I didn't want to. I needed to throw the shackles off yeah. for a little while. Yeah. You know, it, running a band, um, half of it's music and half of it's being a social secretary, you know, and uh, they're doing all the admin and having to keep it going and organising rehearsals, even though. Strictly speaking, who else would do it? I mean, it's my music. And, but I came to the end of my natural wanting to do it for a while, and I decided to get out from under, from under okay. and go and do something else. At the same time, obviously, I'd been talking to Mark, so I knew there was other things out there for me to do. Yep. And there were some loose ends to tie up for myself. Um, uh, with, a, with the album, I was sort of slightly dabbling with at the time, which turned out to be a kid's stick too. As a live band, we sort of ceased being a full lineup. Having said that, subsequently in 2014, we did play. I did play live. Um, I flew out to Chicago um, with uh, Julie, that's uh, Mrs. Manning, and Dave Millian, our guitar player. And we did a unplugged semi-acoustic semi -acoustic show in Chicago, um, and then I also played the Resonance Festival in London. With the same lineup, so you know we and obviously when I went to Summer's End this year to play with uh, United Progressive Fraternity, on the next day I also did a solo show on my own. Hmm. So you know, but I, what's the point of me trying to pick one up when I've got married? Exactly. You know, <laughs> Which is a nice segue. How did you meet our mutual friend, Merrick? Well, funnily enough, uh, the only time I've met him has been on the UPF tour. But I have known him for a lot longer, because this was the first time we'd actually met in the flesh, was for the tour we did. Okay. Um, what actually happened was, I was looking for a saxophone player. I used to have a saxophone player that played on, on pretty much all the early albums, called Laura Fowles. Mm -hmm. And she's a great saxophone player, but she decided to go to live in Ibiza and play the clubs. So... I was looking for a saxophone player, and we went through a couple of saxophone players who were quite nice, but not quite got the same dynamic. Yeah. And I was looking for a saxophone player, and um, I got in touch with um, Prog Rock Records in San Diego, mm -hmm. Jordan, mm -hmm. Jordan, and he said he'd just used a saxophone player on a session, and maybe, you know, he, he could give me this telephone number. So he gave me the telephone number, and it turned out to be married. So um, I was a bit tentative. I was doing the album. I think I was doing the album Margaret's Children. And I thought, well, I'll test him out, you know. So I don't know anything about it. It sounds all right, but it might, it might be good, it might not be. And I had this uh, piece um, which needed a clarinet, sort of a Benny Goodman clarinet solo, because it was supposed set in the Great Depression at the time uh, in the, the old Savoy. And um, I needed this clarinet, so I said, well, Mary, 
just, uh, I'll send you this song. Would you mind doing a, a quick clarinet solo? He said, well, you know, clarinet's not my, my main instrument. I play the saxophone. I said, all right, well, let's see how you get on. I'm thinking to myself, well, this, could, this is going to be a lot of old rubbish, isn't it? And he arrived, and I just, I flew the piece in. He just arrived by Dropbox. I take the, 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 the WAV file he's given me, and I just throw it into the project on my computer, and it runs in parallel. And I got to the solo, and I just thought, bloody hell, this is brilliant. So I immediately said, right, here's the other nine songs on the album. <laughs> Off you go. Off you go. Do what you like. And the thing about Marek is he's a, he's a very intuitive and very great, uh, he's got a very great ear for arrangement. And I asked him for, you know, sort of a brassy section. And he provided me like four or five saxophone parts that all went across each other. And they sounded great. I mean, they were really, really good. I'd done some, so I just started this off some, you know, some, put it to some pointers to say, well, this is where they think that they go. And it's something along this feel. But I really left the rest of it to him and the sax holders. And some of the work he did on that album was tremendous. And I've used him ever since because... He's great. I mean, he's, he's just one of those natural players. He just yeah. picks up the thing and blows, and it sounds great. You know, you don't have to worry. He, he was fantastic on the UPF tour, I can tell you. You know, just some of us have to try hard, you know? Some of us have to try hard, and there's some of them, some lucky buggers that don't have to try hard. They just pick it up, and they can do it. And Marek's one of those, I can pick it up and do it, guys. Even though he'd protest and say that really keyboards are his, his main instrument. So that, it, I, I can't tell you that. His keyboard playing is good, but I think his saxophone playing is better to me. I mean, I set that up um, to let people discuss what they wanted to do. The problem is that without me having to sit there and stoke the fire every five minutes by dropping a debate, you know, a debate topic on yeah. there, I'd rather hope it would, it would look after itself. Um, it hasn't been taken up particularly because I don't think people have got time to talk about everything. It's very, most of us have got very busy lives. And some, some forums have been very lucky and they've got some very vocal members who keep the thing rolling. Yeah. But I haven't got time to do that, unfortunately. Um, it has to rely on the membership to do that. And if the membership have got other things to do, you know, it will slightly wither on the vine. And that's just the way it is with this. I'm hoping it will pick up. You know, I tried dropping a few you know, hints about things, but nobody seemed to take it up. So, unfortunately, I'm not able to sort of, you know, sort of police it and also act as, uh, you know, the, um, as the main driving force behind it. I provided it there so that we had a, something other than the band website where other discussions might take place and hopefully would. But I don't think, I don't think the message has wholly got out there yet about what UPF is really about. I, I, that's the problem. I don't think that it, or it, the message hasn't gotten out properly, or it just hasn't stuck, or something. But I know when I was first approached by Mark, he had such passion about it, and wanted people to be ambassadors, etc. So I said, sure, I'll do anything to help save this crazy world. And then it just sort of... I know that there's a lot of other things going on, but um, as one of the ambassadors, we were sent on uh, sort of a manifesto sort of thing, an emission statement, and then yeah. told that there would be more information coming, and it's been almost six well, months. Well, it's been a difficult few months, really, uh, yeah. this year. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had a hand in writing the mission statement, so I know all that's about it. It's up on the website. Um, I think we're very serious. I mean, the Mark and I talked about this project before it actually became a project, really. And no. uh, it was through a mutual wanting to do something about things ecologically. I mean, a lot of my, my own recordings deal with ecological subject matter. And we found we had common ground. Now, the problem is, how do you get a message like that out when you're a musician in a rock band without coming across as being crass? You know, that's the problem. It, you've got a message to say, but everybody thinks either the message is there to get you to sell more records, or it's not that important because it's got a nice tune. Yeah. So it's, it's very difficult to be able to, without putting on events which are wholly not UPF playing music events, yeah. to divorce ourselves away from the fact that we are a project rock band 
which wants to tell people about things, but we do it in song. Right. And, and once you start to perform it, that performance takes precedence in many people's minds over yeah. the actual message of what you're trying to get across. Because the thing is, it, we could put lyrics and make really horrible songs, and maybe people would remember the lyrics some more. But if you put a nice tune to it, and it's nice and got a nice beat to it, a lot of people will tend to switch off, you know, and just listen to the tune, you know, they won't read the lyrics. It's yeah. a bit, um, to me, lyrics are very important. They always have been. Extremely yeah. important. No. But you can't make people... Get the message. message. What you hope is that by liking the band and liking the music, the message infuses itself over time until, you know, when, when, you st when they're listening to Water for the tenth time, they actually start to think less about the tune and less about the fact that John Anderson happens to be singing on it and more about what the subject matter is about, which is the shortage of water. But you can't do that. You can't sort of put that across the front way. Please read the lyrics before listening to this album. You know, there's no precursor to it. People will judge it on what it is. And some people will take it as a record, which is the first thing you would ask is, well, why do all these people want to help out? And if, if you answer that question, why do all these people, other than getting themselves on a really great sounding record, um, other than that, the people are doing it because they're interested in what it's about, not necessarily just managing to get a piano solo onto a particular track, or being Steve Hackett or John Anderson, if you know what I mean. And is it, because um, I'm not sure if I understood this concept correctly or not, but are the proceeds of the album going towards a specific um, uh, not charity but maybe non-profit organization to help the planet? Um, I think you'd have to ask more Julia and, and Mark about that but what they are doing is working with agencies, for example the water conservation agencies in Australia to promote the idea of water shortage by usage of material that we produce right. and performances that we do that's not to say that everything we make, we give, we build, you know, we don't take all the proceeds from the album and immediately go and buy wells in Central Africa or anything. You know, we don't do that. But I think because, but a lot, I say most of us in the band are not in it for the money. I mean, I certainly didn't make very much out of the album proceeds and I certainly made less than nothing on the tour. Yeah. But the reason we're doing it is because, you know, the reason we're, we're together, the reason I'm doing it for Mark it's because we've got something important to say. And whether I say it, you know, whether I said it, I said it on the first album, whether I'm on the second album or the third album or what, it's an, it's an open door. As Mark says, he wants to work with lots of people, so it becomes less like a rock band and more like a movement. It's how we handle it. The thing is, you, you can only do that if you believe sincerely in what you're doing mm. and have continuity, you know? Uh, if people come and go, and and the music, you know, drastically changes one minute, you know, one minute it's it's uh, you know everybody playing kazoos, and the next minute it's fully orchestrated, you know, people get confused. So what there has to be is what we need to do now is we're in the we're in the transit. We've got through the transition of Unitopia into UPF, yeah, and now we have to take UPF on its own path and become something which is wholly its own. And yeah. less with the trappings of Unitopia dangling from it as it moves, if you know what I mean. We have to move away from that. There's only so much you can move away. You can't take the walls off without the roof falling down. So we have to basically reinvent some of the music, but we couldn't wholly divorce ourselves from it. So the next album will be completely different because it's a different set of songwriters altogether working on it. Okay. And that's really what I am, just a songwriter. Yeah. And I have to like writing lyrics, so about people. I tend to do it in the third person because I really haven't got that much of an interesting life <laughs> to be able to write it in the first person. So I tend to put it in the third person because it always sounds more interesting and mysterious coming from the mouth of somebody else. <laughs> um, so, you know, I tend to do that. But that's it. You know, I, you know, I can reduce them to a, a lot of them to just uh, on my knee guitar playing. Because in the end, they're just simple songs, really. That's what they are. Well, That's all of these simple songs have brought a lot of pleasure to a lot of people.
So I oh think gosh. that I think that we hope that you continue for many long years, whether it's just with a guitar as a singer songwriter or with UPF or with Manning, should you decide to kick it back in again, whatever you do, it's a pleasure to see you performing. Oh, well, good. I hope to get out and do, do some more. Uh...